Black people, white people need your help, yo. Do you know that dismantling art racist and racial biases can be so difficult to the point where some palm colors are turning to black people for help? But this sister has got some words for them. Yeah, she's not so excited about it because she says that black people cannot help palm colors to dismantle their art to the cyst selves. Although there are a few black people out there that feel comfortable to help palm colors with this task. But this sister says that it's not quite necessary because palm colors are supposed to do that by themselves. And in today's video, she's gonna get deep in these details. So stick around and find out what she said as I play you her video. By the way, if you have any ideas on how palm colors can go about dismantling these racial biases that are ingrained in their subconsciouses to the point that they cannot avoid them, please leave your thoughts in the comment section and tell us what you think as we start. So you all are going to get a bonus video today. Um, take a look at the video right before this one because the comments in that video inspired this video. And... Uh, those comments might not necessarily be there because I did block a lot of people. Um, listen. Whatever your reason is for following me as a white person, it's your reason, it's your business. I don't really rightly care. Here's the thing. What I said stands. When I'm talking to black people and I'm having those conversations that is a black space and there's no reason why you should be centering yourself in a black community discussion because I promise you you cannot fool me or trick me into thinking that you are in this space because you are trying to deconstruct your racism as one person said or because you are being an ally because allies do not talk over marginalized communities when we are having discussions amongst ourselves allies don't do that so please stop with that and as for deconstructing your racism because one person said that to me and I want to talk about that no black person no black person can teach any white person how to deconstruct your racism. When I said in that video that white people, you all have enough issues to worry about where you need to be concerned about what's going on in your own communities, racism is one of those things. Black people, when we're holding conversations, we're talking about how we are dealing with racism. That's really why you're here. And that's the truth. And you're, it's the truth that you're not, you're not going to be able to lie your way out of that truth. Not with me. Maybe with somebody that's less aware or not as conscious. But you're not going to be able to lie your way out of that. that. That's really why you're here. You know why? Let me, let me tell you why. How I know why that is. And I love confronting people with the truth. I think it's just my new thing. If you were really interested in deconstructing your, your racism. You will be having that conversation with other white people who are interested in doing that same work. Black people can't teach you that. Now, there are a lot of misguided black people with good intentions. For some reason, they think they can teach you how to be nice to us. But they're just misguided. Hopefully, you know, they'll, they'll arrive. They'll get there. When they realize that it, black people can't teach white people how to not be racist towards us. That is y'all work. That's not our work. And it's so weird that y'all think that that is our work. That it is our responsibility to teach you how not to be racist. Let me tell you how ludicrous that sounds. Because again, I keep saying, I'm not here to teach you. That's not my purpose in life. But you're still here saying, teach me, teach me, teach me. And I keep saying to you, no, no, no. That's not why I'm here. And yet you keep putting the onus of your onto black people. And that is your, sh that's something you need to take to your community and talk to your people, have discussions with your people about. There are some white people who are so far along in this work, they're not perfect. 
but they are there and they are available to you. I highly recommend that if what you really want to do is deconstruct your racism, you access those white people because they are there and they are doing the work. And they want to teach you how to be an anti-racist, how to deconstruct your racism, how to self-correct those behaviors, those problematic thoughts, those intrusive thoughts that you have about black people and other uh, marginalized communities. But yet here you are thinking that black people, the victims of your racism, can teach you how to not victimize us. That's weird. Following black people is not going to teach you how to do that. Doing the work. Saying that I follow black creators and I uplift black creators. How, how, explain to me again how that teaches you how to not be a racist. Explain to me like I'm a two-year-old how that's going to teach you how not to be a racist. Y'all are not confronting the people, the race in your own communities. You all are marrying them, sitting at the kitchen table with them, going out on dates with them, having their kids, working for them, working with them, hiring them. But somehow it's our responsibility. That's not our work. That's your work. That is one of those issues that I said is a white community issue. As black people, the victims of your race, figure out how to navigate your racial violence. We got enough work over here to do. Don't put that on us. How dare you put that on us? How many of you would trade places with a black person in this society. Raise your hand. I don't know the answer to that. Well, it's yes or no. How many of you would do it? I know I would. I mean, I, I, I dated a Hispanic very dark. No, no, I'm not talking about Hispanic. The question is. But I was going to have children. So I spent many years thinking of myself of having very dark skinned children. The question is. How many of you would be willing to trade places in this society with a black person? I think I would. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. No. Okay. I'm not saying there's not racism. Absolutely not. It's just saying I don't see it. Yeah, but you know how not, racist this country not is. Not to the degree that you do. Oh, no, you right? will never know. You know, in this country, we created the criminalization of black people. And when your skin is seen as a weapon, you're never unarmed. And that's why black boys and men and women are down in the street with their hands up. I'm not sure if I've shared this with you all yet. I'm not sure if I have, but I have the pleasure and the honor to moderate a panel after a showing of the movie Deconstructing Karen. It's a documentary that was done by Sarah Rao, Regina Jackson. It is incredible. It follows along what they call race to dinner, where they invite white women who have identified as liberal, progressive, Democrat, and have an honest conversation about race. And it's one that's very necessary. And I'm rewatching it. I'm rewatching it because it's coming up. I want to make sure it's fresh. I'm rewatching it. And there was a person on there that was talking about why they were there. And they mentioned that they're descendants of slave traders and they've been told some really ugly history. And they feel like the way they need to come out of it is to just be uncomfortable and have these conversations. And I have seen that before. White women saying, we just have to get uncomfortable and have these conversations. Conversations. We just have to get uncomfortable and have these conversations. And I, I have some thoughts about that. I want people to feel their feelings. I want people to feel what they need to feel when they come up, when they're doing this work. It's important to stay in touch with what you're feeling so you can name it and have it be part of your healing. I want that to absolutely be the case. I want white women specifically to think about what is uncomfortable. I want you to think about what's uncomfortable. Please do not fill my comment section with it. I want you to take a journal page and write what you're labeling as uncomfortable. The reason why I'm saying this, the reason why it's important to name what makes you uncomfortable is so that when it pops back up again, you recognize that it's a feeling of discomfort and nothing more than that. Being uncomfortable in decolonizing work and anti racist work is one of the easiest parts of going through it. To feel discomfort about hearing what you might have participated in that harmed somebody else, you're gonna be okay. Again, this is not to say that you won't feel uncomfortable. You just need to think about why you feel uncomfortable and think about who you tell that you're uncomfortable. 
And if you think that you should tell it to a black person, an indigenous person, or another person of the global majority, then I'm going to invite you to keep working on your community because that's where it should go. I just think that it's so burdening uh, to task black people with this thing, you know, because they are the victims. Black people are the victims of the oppression. And the oppressor is pretty much aware of how he went about with this oppression. You know why? Because it's a formula. No wonder it's called systemic because it was designed, it was implemented by design. So palm coloreds are quite aware or rather should be quite aware of how to go about this, right? Because they understand the appropriateness of palm coloredness. That is the reason why they uphold it. And that is the reason why they created it in the 1700s in the first place, because they realized that it is an essential element for them to rise to the top of social dynamism. Right. And that is the reason why I think that sister said that the victim cannot be the teacher in this case. Like, just think about it. If a robber or, or a robbery takes place in your house, right, and then you catch those armed robbers, are you supposed to start giving them guidelines and mentorship on how and why they shouldn't steal from you again or why they shouldn't steal from anybody else? Like, that's a funny thing to think about it. Like, just imagine you capture somebody that was trying to uh, get into your house and steal something from you. And all of a sudden you start giving them some uh, lessons like that's another level of comedy right there and i know some pretty wild comedians that can make a stunning joke just out of that statement alone that's just drama 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 and i think that palm coloreds are quite the orchestrators of drama right you understand how they know everything that goes on in the black community and how by design they always implement and try to put up discussions that will make black people respond to them right so i think that's the reason why those palm coloreds were flooding this sister's comment section with those questions and assignments how can you teach me how to uh, uh dismantle this art to the self of mine but the thing is that these people are surrounded with families that are to the cyst, families that hate black people, right? I think it's only natural that if you want to do something away with, you have to avoid the elements that further fuel that thing, right? And that includes avoiding certain friends, avoiding sub, uh, certain family members, avoiding certain discussions. Like I'm just saying, as much as this sister forbid that black people should not give palm colored advice, we did see another sister step into the scene and offered those insightful perspectives on how palm colored can go about it. So if you are a palm colored out there or you are just somebody dealing with biases, I think you can get a few pointers from that sister's video. But like I mentioned, show me your friends and I'll tell you who you are. Right. So if you hang around with palm coloreds or friends that are out of the cyst or friends that just know any particular subject in details, for that matter, you're also going to become an expert. Remember, the Bible says that when Saul walked with prophets, he also prophesied. What does that mean? That means that Saul wasn't a prophet, right? He was ordained to be the king of Israel. But when he was looking for wisdom amongst the prophets, he went where they were meditating in the Bible, right? Then after he found the prophets, I don't know how he, uh, he got that knowledge or the wisdom, but the spirit of prophesying came upon him. And all of a sudden, he started prophesying. And that's where the scripture that says that when Saul walked with prophets, he prophesied comes from, right? So when you are walking with art of assist people, you're also going to become art of assist. When you are walking with poor people, you are likely uh, going to get drained financially. When you're walking with multimillionaires, I've heard a lot of financial gurus and experts give this advice, right? Hang around with people that are making money and you're going to be making money in no time. So hang around with people that are anti art to the cyst and you're going to be anti art to the cyst in no time. Like it's simple mathematics. Like you don't even have to go to school for this, especially if you are really serious in your cause. So it's just a matter of commitment and anything takes commitment for it to be done. And when I say walk around, what I mean is mingle, right? Or have a relationship or have a connection or a tie with something, right? So when I say walk around uh, this sort of people, I mean mingling be found around them, mingle with them, get their words and utilize it, try it out, taste the waters and see if the spirit is willing. That's how uh, you go about certain things. I think that's how you go about everything in life. Just have a commitment, have a willingness and the desire to do it. But the other fact or the other notion that I want to point out is the anti-blackness in these palm coloreds. Like palm coloreds, they know exactly what they're supposed to do. But I think because of the anti-blackness and because they just want to get something out of a black person said, they are going to go to the comment section. And that is the reason why that sister blocked them in the first place. Because some questions, they're just irrelevant, uh, insensitive. Some questions are just provocative. 
They ask these questions to get a reaction from you. They ask these questions and they make these videos. Like we've seen a lot of palm colors, especially with the dear black women trend recently. Like they want to get a reaction from you. And they are saying it in a way that is provocative. They are saying it in a way that they're going to spark a reaction from you. And also the watermelon community, not forgetting that, right? We've recently seen protests from them. We've recently seen videos being made by their people. What are they trying to do? They are spewing anti-blackness while trying to get a reaction from the black community. Perhaps a number of them could have been genuine, but all you know, palm colors are palm colors. With that being said, now I've come to the end of our discussion. Leave your thoughts in the comments and tell me what you think about today's video. I'll see you in the next video. And tell me, do you have any ideas on how to go about dismantling art Leave your thoughts in the comments. Signing off, take care.